Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I am taking a look at the Akai Force, which I have uh, I have two Akai Force units. I love this unit. Um, I know it's not the most popular Akai unit right now. Uh, everyone's really into the NPC, and I have a couple NPCs, and I love them. Uh, but the Akai Force, I feel like, is very underrated, and, um, <clears throat> and I mean, with them basically being kind of, I'll say, out of fashion, but uh, currently there's no word from Akai whether they're going to bring their new operating system to them, so I don't know what's going to happen to these units, uh, but uh, even so, in their current state, they're still a pretty nice unit to play with, uh, and you can probably get them pretty inexpensively used on the uh, on the used market, I would imagine, because right now I... I don't know people who are using them for much other than uh, people like myself who use them for sequencing and I use them alongside my NPCs uh, as extra instruments and such. But uh, one other thing that you can do with it, you can use it to sequence you know, physical instruments, which right now I've got it hooked up to my, my Seek Track. And, uh, you know, I've done a lot with the Seek Track lately. I really do enjoy the Seek Track a lot. Because it can be used as a sound module, uh, it can be hooked up, you know, directly via MIDI right here we go uh, coming out from the force into the seek track and the seek tracks running into my mixer along with the the Akai force and I can actually do some really cool stuff sequencing wise here that is not really easy to do on the the uh, seek track standalone in some cases not even possible to do on the seek track standalone among those things that I am referring to when we just uh, set up this this channel here first and I'll show you uh, change this to Kai Force. By the way, if this is the kind of content that you like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I do this kind of thing a lot. Every week, at least once a week, I usually put out a video, and this week, this is what I'm talking about. Um, it wasn't asked for. It was something I just thought I'd share because it's something that, with Akai having announced MPC version 3, which looks dope as hell, uh, not trying to you know take away from that at all i cannot wait to get my hands on it i am signed up for the beta of course but uh until then just use what you got and just because something isn't uh the cool kid on the block anymore per se or just because it's not being used as much by uh, other people doesn't mean it can't be used by you use what's right for you to make music and what you can get your hands on and i have a feeling these units are going to come down in price if they do not Akai does not uh, bring the operating system that they just created over to it, or at least start maintaining it a little more, because right now it, um, it's it been feeling a little neglect. Um, but uh, anyway, so right now on your uh, Seek track, let me explain how this all works. We've got seven drums and three synthesizers and a, uh, I'm sorry, three synthesizers and a sampler. And the sampler is, of course, this sampler. <laughs> Sorry about that <laughs> project I'm working on over there. Um, it, it has these little one-shot samples, so it doesn't have a lot of craziness to the sampler. Um, the DX synthesizer on here. All right. Okay. And then we have these two, which are rompler type synths. All right. Also, we have all the drums, okay? Now this drum, you'll notice, isn't a drum at all. That's part of what I'm gonna show you. For example, if I wanted to, I could create my drum track right here, all right? And just set this to one. So this will be my kick track. And this is actually kind of cool because I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here. I personally like to keep my drums on separate tracks so that they're not, uh, I don't like making all my drums in one section. And I know that might seem a little crazy to some of you, but let me explain why. Back in the day, when I was uh, working at the record label that I worked at in the early 90s, we would have to take the music that we created and spit it out one track at a time to an ADAT so that we could EQ all the instruments and that type of thing and make sure everything was, was in there, you know, the mix was nice. As a result, if you put all your drums on one track, 
you would have a nightmare because you'd have to back then there was no like quick way to spit them out and separate them to one drum per track now there were ways to do that but back in the day what i would do was i would duplicate the track one for each drum hit that was in there as in each instrument and then i would uh go through and delete all but one drum it was very tedious so i'm used to keeping things separate and that works for me if if that's not how you work that's okay you don't have to do it this way but i think it's kind of nice all right so let's go back to the matrix here and i'm going to go and tell it this one's a midi channel 2 and i want this one to be capacitive touch fingers aren't working for some reason let's see i think my hi-hat that i want to get to is hi-hat on channel 5 i'm pretty sure and put that on force this one's going to be my clap which is on force and channel 3 and then this one is going to be now you notice i'm able to move through these quickly by just tapping the button and it lets me change all this real quick it's it's pretty nice because that's you know just the way things go now i'm going to actually even name these just so we can find what's what i'm going to name this one kick this guy should be hi-hat we'll just call it hats and then this guy should be clap naming your stuff will save you a lot of headaches in production because you won't have to go back and fix them or wonder what things are you'll just be able to look and know what you're looking at all right so now let's go to we're in the matrix so let's stop everything and we'll go to kick rather than actually playing this in grab my pencil tool and we're just going to draw these in on c2 i think in here and there we go now let's go back to the matrix get my hats and we'll go right here to edit the grid and same thing we're going to do here as we did there except we're going to go every other There we go. So we're right between all the kicks. Oops. There we go. Now if I play it. All right. And now we'll go back to the matrix one more time. Boom. Stop that. There we go. Three, I think, is good for this one. All right. So now we're going to do this one every other kick so put one of the two one of the four two one of four again and yeah we'll see how it sounds i think we should be good there all right there we go so we've got the basic house beat type thing going on now and that is all coming off of the seek track i know that seemed like a lot and i could have done it quicker by just playing it but i just wanted to kind of show you how you could edit it real fast in there um not necessarily real fast but you know you get the idea quickly compared to any other way that you might be able to do it manually all right so let's get out of here and now if i want to let's get another midi channel and we will get uh yeah, we'll get that guy right here. This is uh, my uh, eighth instrument, eighth channel eight. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's get MIDI channel eight. Let's change the color so we can see it. I want to make this uh, red, I think. There we go. All right. Now, everything's staying in sync. Let's go into notes so I can see what's going on here. We can play something. Go a little... Now, one thing that's cool here that you can't do on the Seek track itself is have another copy of the same uh, instrument. So if I wanted to have more of that same instrument, I would have to record over that music and have basically the overlapping notes. Now, you may not want the notes to overlap. You may want to be able to keep them separate as well, uh, but you can't because the, the Seek track is limited to one track per instrument. Okay. But because we're using an external sequencer right now, we are not limited by that. We can just create another track 
Go right here, another MIDI track, and this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn it red also, just for fun, because I like the red. Um, in case you can't tell by my logo that I'm into red. Um, and that will be channel eight, okay, and close. And now you can see that it's the same. Now, what I would recommend you do here is name these because you'll this can get confusing if you're using the same color. I just like the same color for to if it's the same instrument, I like to do that. So we'll say this is my uh we call it the pulse, and then We'll go over here, and this one we're going to call the lead. lead, and do that, and now we'll go back over here, and there we go. There you go. So now we've got two instruments on the same channel, kind of playing together the same instrument but it's kind of doubling up by layering an additional uh you know an additional riff over it but at the same time because i'm not i don't have that on the same exact same you know pad i can mute that out so if i want to i can go like uh let's, let's go here we'll go uh All right, and that's kind of cool. And you can do that with all the instruments on here. Uh, so you get the idea there. Um, let me stop this for a second. Now, the other thing we can do here that you can't do on the Seek Track directly, or at least not super easily, is use the uh, percussion bits as instruments. You can load any sample you want into these. So uh, for custom drum kit or whatever, you, you can load anything you want on board there. It doesn't have to be a drum. It can be a sample. So in this case, I loaded a bass sound. Let's uh, let's activate that track. We'll go right here. We'll add another track, and this one's going to be another MIDI track. And turn that to force again. And this time we're going to go for seven because that's my seventh instrument on the, the high force. And there it is. And now we've got that all set up. And Something else that's interesting is even if you can, even when you can kind of make this happen over there and have it play the instrument on the seek track and by turning the knob and changing the pitch and all that to make sure that you can get different sounds off of it. Uh, it's kind of a neat trick that I used. I did another video on it. I'll put a link to it in the, the description below or maybe right up top here. The other thing that this needs now you can actually play polyphonically. which you cannot do with the drums on the Seek track. It's a monophonic track. So now if I want to, let's just throw a little bit of this in here. We'll go right over here and we'll go back to the matrix one more time. Okay, and let's see what we can come up with for this. There we go. And that's it. So basically, yeah, just to show you a little bit of how you can use the Seek Track beyond uh, just the normal everyday uh, use, that's pretty much it. We just took that whole thing and made a cool little track here. The only thing I would say uh, that when you're done, be sure that you note what instruments you used because the only downside to doing what we're doing right here right now um, is, uh, and actually, well, you know what, better yet, save the product or project uh, on your uh, software so the instruments are saved because when you uh, leave the project you can forget what instruments were being used and mm, it will sound all wonky 
on you. So, you know, I would recommend saving the uh, the actual instruments loaded over here. The other thing that's kind of neat, by the way, <laughs> I forgot to mention this, is that because we're using the Seek Track and all the sounds of Seek Track, we also have the abilities built in here to... All the little extras. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's pretty dope. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye for now.